So iOS 13 is coming out in a few months. Was that a surprise to anybody? It should not be. Now, by the time you're watching this, you've probably seen all the major features already been talked about, but here's 18 things that came across my mind when I watched the keynote that you probably missed. Now, the most important feature for iOS 13 is that we can now have enterprise accounts for iCloud. And have separate iCloud accounts for your personal and work lives. I'm kidding. The most important feature is the update to Maps. I'm so happy to show you what's new in Apple Maps. I'm kidding again, nothing Apple can do will ever make me like Apple Maps. Now the most important feature from my perspective is gonna be number seven and number 12. Now most videos would tell you to keep watching to find out what number seven, 12 are, but I'm not that kind of guy. So number seven is machine learning and number 12 is privacy. So let's uh, get down to the deets. The highest customer satisfaction in the industry with an incredible 97%. This is unbelievable. You know, it looks great, 97%, but stats like this always make me chuckle because when it comes to satisfaction, don't I need something else to compare it to? Like I can only use iOS on an iPhone, nothing else. So technically shouldn't the satisfaction be 100% since there's no other options? iOS 12 has been installed on more systems than any version of iOS ever. Now that's in stark contrast to the latest offering from those other guys Tim Cook throws a lot of shade on the other guys. 10% adoption and realistically, yeah, that's a pretty big deal, but other guys, I wanna focus on that because he doesn't outright say Android. And at this moment I was thinking, maybe he's not allowed to do that anymore. But then the slide comes up and it removes all debt regarding who the other guys actually are. It's Mark Wahlberg and Will Ferrell. Craig Ferranger, Craig F. I don't know how to really say his name. I'd like to hand it over to Craig. So Craig comes out, which is always good, because, you know, I like Craig. There's two things. The first one is that he's a pretty funny guy, I think. Uh, when's, I, I really want to see his stand-up routine. When it came to naming this release, our crack marketing team really surprised us this year. Number two is that every single time I see his last name, I cannot pronounce it for the life of me, mostly because my last name is Ho, so anything longer than that, I have very a very hard time pronouncing last names, like Ho. That's I just assume everybody else's last name is going to be as easy to say. But the Ferengi, every single time I see that, I see the word Ferengi. Now you will too. So iOS 13 is going to be performance-based, which is odd, you know, not odd, odd in the sense that that's what they're focused on. Does that mean there's nothing else better? But don't worry, Face ID is going to be 30% faster, which means it's going to allow me to access the App Store or pay with my Apple credit card faster for all those gems I'm going to buy. So this seems pretty interesting to me. I'm a pretty big fan of optimization generally. Haven't really been disappointed by Apple's ability to make their latest software work on old phones. Now, people are going to get so mad because the iPhone 5S and the iPhone 6s are not going to be supported by this release. And... As bad as that sounds, iOS 12 actually wasn't supposed to work on the iPhone 5S. If you look at all the historical updates to the iOS's, uh, iOS 12 was actually a free update for you iOS 5S users. So given that they're knocking two off this year, shouldn't be a big deal, but people are losing their effing minds about it. And some new tricks, because now when you type, you can swipe. So quick path keyboard, really? This is embarrassing to me. How is this even a feature in iOS 13? It should have been a side note at the bottom of the page of iOS 13 saying, we finally bought out a keyboard company that everybody else has been implementing stock, I'll say, for the last eight years. But now, let's begin our descent into darkness. Oh good, dark mode. Who uses dark mode? Seriously, I think my MacBook Pro has dark mode. I don't know, I've never used it. Do we hate the color white so much that we have to do everything in black now? So next up is machine learning. And this thought kind of came up when I was watching the sharing suggestions portion. And machine learning is the proper term and machine learning is not AI. Now we're starting to hear a lot about machine learning in, well, these keynotes, right? All these companies are really focusing on machine learning, but there's this common notion that machine learning and AI are the same thing, and they're not. From my perspective, AI is about making the right decisions, whereas machine learning is all about learning things from data. Hundreds of planes and cars with custom sensors and LIDAR. 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 LIDAR is just one of those words. I worked with it a lot in the past in my previous career, and it just sounds weird, and it sounded even weirder when I heard it in the keynote. It's just, I guess you say it enough times, LIDAR, LIDAR, 
LIDAR. LIDAR. Also, Elon Musk hates LIDAR. True story. Here's our old map, and here is the new map. Old map versus new maps? What does that even mean? Apple, literally, all you did was just collect more data to put on your map. I hate Apple Maps so much. With look around, I get a gorgeous, high definition, 3D view. Look around? Are you kidding me? Are you freaking kidding me? Seriously? Street view? Hello? Also, I still hate you, Apple Maps. Because at Apple, we believe privacy is a fundamental human right, and we engineer it into everything we do. Next up is privacy and security. And Apple believes that privacy is a fundamental human right, which is a very rosy way at looking at the world, I'll say. Whereas in other tech companies believe it's their right to harvest your information and then enslave you with it by selling it to advertisers. From my perspective, there's this cold war brewing when it comes to privacy and these tech companies. Who's gonna win? I really do hope Apple because Privacy, I think, is a fundamental human right. I, I agree with it, but it's gonna be such a slog, right? Because, well, privacy <laughs> as a fundamental human right doesn't make other people money. Google, Facebook, Amazon see you as an ATM machine, so they'll probably win. Your personal information sometimes gets shared behind the scenes, and these logins can be used to track you. So we wanted to solve this, and many developers do too. And so now we have the solution. It's called sign in with Apple. Now I was gonna make fun of social uh, logins. I thought it was gonna be like, you know, Apple's credit card, which is gonna be from my perspective, a giant cash cow for them. But having a random email address assigned to each app so that you don't get any spam email is actually pretty freaking awesome. Like so many people were excited. Just listen to how excited that audience was for random email addresses. That forwards to your real address. And like, I'm personally a big fan of email aliases. If you don't know what that is with iCloud, you have your main name, iCloud address, and then you can have like other ones, right? So I've got like a randomly generated one that I use for all the newsletters, right? So I, when I get email, if it's gone to that weirdly named email, I know it's gonna be spam. And as a side note, Apple does talk about HomeKit enabled routers, which means the Apple Airport Extreme and Expresses technically aren't dead. We're beauty influencers from the internet. Today, we're gonna show you how to make a cute, flirty, emoji look. Piercings! Nose ring, brow ring, earring, lip ring, tongue ring! You can customize your teeth in here? Ooh, braces, gap tooth, missing tooth. A mini grill. What did I just watch? Last but not least, AirPods! Like seriously, what did I just watch? AirPods! Seriously, what did you all just watch? Now, given that China is probably going to ban iPhones in the near future, Apple must be really doubling down on making the features in the new iOS more appealing to young people because gosh darn it, we definitely need to find more ways for our youth to waste their time on useless things while we talk down to them, telling them to use their time better rather than wasting it on things that we, as the older generation, have created. Am I too old to understand all of this? Like, I'm a millennial. I'm supposed to understand this, but... Why? Why? I don't get it. Why isn't my face just good enough? Why do I need to show the world the gap between my teeth that I've got old man marks growing on my face? But, you know, I'm not a kid. I'm not 20. So I'm just going to assume that it's geared towards the younger generation, which is probably why the audience was like... So I think that's given us all a great deal to think about. Yay, photos got updated. The biggest upgrade in, uh, in the Photos app is that the months feature is organized by months. So months organizes the most meaningful events in my library by month. Yeah, that was said. There's an app with an owl on it. An owl! Now I'm only bringing this up because my son, who's currently fascinated with my beakless owl that sits on my porch that supposedly keeps the pigeon away. He just loves that thing. So yeah, just throwing it out there. Hand off to HomePod sounds pretty cool, but what happens when you place your HomePod in an out of the way place? And in the Shortcuts app, you can create your own personalized multi-step shortcut. Now on iOS 13, the app is built right in and it is more powerful than ever. Siri shortcuts still exists? Let me know in the comment section below if you've actually used Siri shortcuts. At least there's an app now, I guess, in iOS 13 that helps me see what Siri shortcuts actually are. Where for the first time ever, the voice you hear is entirely generated by software. The state at which the enthalpy and entropy of a cooled ideal gas reach their minimum value. Wait, Siri's not a real person? So those are the 18 differences. I got one more for you. Call spam. 
Why aren't you talking about call spam? It's so bad. Like I'm a reviewer, so I've got dozens of iOS devices. And so when the callers call <laughs> my phone, they all erupt in a, I get a text message, like everything. There's so many noises everywhere. So why isn't call spam? I guess this is more of a personal. Thing for me but call spam they're going to dress in ios 13 how i don't know they don't talk about it i feel like it's very important but that's just me so that's all i got those are the 18 19 yeah that's like 20 things did you miss did you see the pomodoro timer at the beginning of the uh, keynotes you probably didn't because pomodoro is so awesome if this is the first time watching one of my videos on this channel i am a reviewer and i'm a fairly unbiased reviewer unlike other people that are sponsored by the uh, products that they review i am not so i actually go buy out all the stuff and then i tell you which one's best just the way i do it so that's kind of all i got if you uh keep watching i do have one or two more videos left in me for the uh, wwdc 2019. uh that's kind of all i got all right monty 